Hey trainers, welcome back! You're with Peter City Gym and we have a bonus Sola episode this month. For those unfamiliar or new, welcome! Sola is this channel's ongoing project to create a fake Imon region based on Southern California and some of the surrounding areas. So we have desert, wilderness, desert wilderness, some goopy little waterways filled with ducks and turtles, suburbs, desert suburbs. Um, creating Fakemon to fill up these biomes has been a passion of mine for almost two years now, and we're getting quite a little Pokedex going at this point with almost 50 species. If any of this sounds like fun to you, please consider dropping a sub, or liking this video, or interacting in the comments. It really helps little channels like this one grow, and it's always appreciated. I do a lot of Let's Play content, but we're focusing on art and design a little bit more for 2023, especially in regards to Fakemon, so that's why we're doing a bonus episode for Easter. Okay, so we are starting out in the lab today because I wanted to show off my my do-it-yourself skills. Last episode, we didn't have a roof or anything due to a weird random kaiju attack, which I knew nothing about till it was happening, I promise. Uh, but between Farad and myself, we've been doing a lot of repair work. I think just one more board and we will be finished. Um, I guess it's, uh, it's time for another nature walk. So, in the southwestern US, we have a crazy number of desert bugs. One of the most interesting and kind of gruesome is the tarantula hawk wasp. Doesn't it look cool? So, parasitic wasps are a relatively common thing. They snag a piece of prey, lay an egg on it, the wasp larva hatches, and the prey is... Well, it's not exactly a great time. For this species, Pepsis formosa, tarantulas are the main prey source, hence the name. Tarantula hawk wasp. You can identify them by their black iridescent bodies and those dark orange wings. I think they look so absolutely cool. So, uh, you know, let's completely destroy that edgy image and make them kind of goofy looking. Uh, today's episode, being an Easter special, is focused on eggs, and so are these designs. My thought was, instead of the adult wasp laying an egg on live prey, what if it was more of a cuckoo situation? The adult wasp drops its quote-unquote egg into a nest of another Pokemon where it pretends to be one of the clutch. Just another egg, nothing to see here. And if it is noticed, easy and Sola because all of the eggs are different colors, why, look at this adorable face. Look at those big, cute eyes and that little mouth. Why would you want to hurt this little creature? It's just a defenseless baby, after all. Raise it as one of your own children, why don't you? What are you, some kind of heartless jerk? Of course, as it grows, its demand for food increases and it runs the parents of this clutch completely ragged. But what is parenthood other than sacrifice and the joy that comes with it? I used the egg colors from the eggs in Pokemon Go to color this line. I just thought it would be a cute way to go, including the light green of the egg screen background. And here we have Shamago, the fake egg Pokemon. Shamago aren't eggs, but the larval stage of a parasitic wasp Pokemon. They are deposited in the nests of unwary parents and will live out this stage being catered to by them. While they might look cute, they are secretly devious. Sometimes they get mixed up in a group of execute by mistake. Here are your stats and moves. Because it's an insect larvae, don't expect anything too terribly powerful at first, but it does have some eggy themed moves going on that make it surprisingly formidable at later levels. The name? Sham and Tamago, which is Japanese for egg. Now, we have two evolutions to get to. Let's look at dad first, shall we? The males of pretty much all species of parasitic wasp are smaller than the females. They eat nectar, don't live quite as long, and are usually a lot less striking in color. That's where this design comes in. It's kind of a small, round, unassuming looking little guy. In fact, he's shocked. Shocked, I tell you, to think that his evolutionary line is responsible for dropping off larvae in the nests of others. Can't you see how shocked he is? Why, look at that face. Of course, it's all a facade. He knows what's going on. He just doesn't have the battle power to back up the deviousness of his lifestyle, so he has to feign surprise. Again, egg colors from Pokemon Go are what I used to color him. Let me know in the comments if you like these color schemes. I'd be really interested to know. And here we have Flim Flamago, the bad actor Pokemon. Flim Flamago believe that they are masters at the art of lying, when in fact, most other Pokemon see right through their ruse. They don't have a very powerful bite. Here's your stats and moves. Facade, Trick Room, a couple of other attacks that show that this little fellow isn't on the up and up. Flim Flam is another word for fakery or deceit, and again, Tamago. On to the last member of this line. We have the child, we have the father. Well, there's one other component to this crime family that needs to be exposed. Here comes Mama. To mimic the iridescent chitin of the tarantula hawk, I used the colors from the silver raid eggs in Pokemon Go and tried to shade with that shininess in mind. I also used colors from the red eggs in Pokemon Go for those wings and such. That kind of egg usually hatches dark type Pokemon and you get them from the rocket bosses, so I figured that thematically that worked. 
I wanted her to look devious and crafty. I get the impression that she finds the handing off of parental duties kind of funny. Beldamago, the absent Pokemon. Beldamago are extremely stealthy Pokemon, able to put their larvae into the nests of other Pokemon without them noticing. They never see that larvae again. And here are your stats and moves. A few dark and poison attacks, and uh, focus on physical attack. Gotta be able to defend yourself if an angry mom finds you up in her nest. Beldamago is from Tamago again, but also references the mythical Beldum. You might know it best from Coraline, but it has a pretty cool mythological history behind it as well as a cool movie. They're particularly great at disguising stuff to look like other stuff. You know, like disguising their kids to look like someone else's eggs. In terms of abilities, you've got Anticipation for Shimago. This alerts it of an opponent as a super effective move. Flim Flamago and Beldamago, who evolved from Shimago with this ability, will get Levitate. This protects them from ground-type moves. Hidden ability is Infiltrator for all three. This allows them to attack and disregard barriers like Reflect and Light Screen. And here are your shinies. The colors are based off of the 7km eggs in Pokemon Go. And the egg for this species? Oh, it uh, hmm, seems like I can't find one to show you. Weird. So, where would you find these guys? You can't find Shimago in the wild at all. You never come across wild nests filled with eggs, which is where they'd be. Flim Flamago and Beldamago would be found wild in the desert wild area. Battle a Beldamago in the wild, and the next time you place the Pokemon that KO'd it in the daycare, the first egg you get won't actually be an egg. That's the only way to obtain Shimago and Sola, apart from breeding Beldamago directly, of course. That's why there's no egg. You just get given a Shimago at level 1. So, with Sola's eggs, they're all different colors. Very eastery, right? But what if you want the egg to be a surprise? Maybe you're doing egg trades with a friend, or maybe you're being given an egg by a friendly NPC and you'd rather not know what's inside. Well, we have an item for that. It's just a cute little egg basket with some fake grass, a big bow, and some wrapping paper. Not exactly an incubator, but maybe that fake grass is good enough insulation. Who knows? But yes, anytime an NPC gifts you an egg, it would be stuck in one of these. You can purchase them at Pokemarts for use on your own eggs as well. Perfect for gifting eggs to your friends or surprising yourself if you want to put a bunch of different eggs in them and then try mixing them up to hatch a random team. Anyway, that's all I've got for you this time, trainers. Hope you enjoyed the bonus episode. I'm looking forward to catching you in the next one. But till then, take care. Bye!